Good evening and welcome to Truth Right Back. Tonight is uh, number 87. Number 87, day number 87. And we are going to be in the book of 2 Samuel, chapter 7 through 11. Hmm. It's not a good night for David tonight. Uh, it's going to be a tough read tonight. I sometimes wish we could reach through the pages of the Bible and tell him, don't do it. He's going to drop. Here we have it. All right. Well, let's uh, let's see who's on tonight. Hold on. Oh, Mr. Ricky Tiki's in the house. Kimberly says, I just finished last night's study after work about two hours ago. <laughs> oh, that's awesome, Kimberly. That is awesome. Saint, God bless you, sister. Teresa, good to see you. God bless you. Always great to see Saint Teresa. Brother Adam from New Mexico, God bless you. Kimberly, I didn't know you spoke Spanish. Estoy muy bien, gracias. Well, Giovanelli, I, I think that your screen name sounds Italian, right? My daughter's names are all Italian, by the way. I've always loved Italian names. Um, I think maybe my mom was part Italian. I don't know. Ricky Tiki's in the house. We're on the big screen. Yeah, there's a lot of drama tonight. Speaking of screen, hey, wait a minute. Rain's in the house. Where have you been, Rain? Well, guys, uh, you may have heard the announcement. Elvis is in the building. Well, Peter, I mean, Peter is in the building. And uh, and we've got the one and only Mr. Pacific S'mores. Uh, Mr. S'mores. He's blurred. He's blurred out. Where, where are you? There he is. That's a maybe. Mr. S'mores. Hey, what's the matter with you? <laughs> Mr. about it. Mr. S'mores, that's a good, that's a good one. I, I, I like your Lu Luigi uh, about it. impersonation. About it. Where's the my spaghetti? Right, right. Where's the my spaghetti? Oh, I can go for that right now, man. Yeah, you guys, do, do you guys ever, I, am I the only one, do you ever watch a movie and, and you're in your, you're in your living room or sitting on your couch and you're trying to talk to the character in the movie? Like, don't do it, or don't open the door, or, you know, I don't know. Am I the only one that does that? No, I stopped taking those kind of drugs when I was about three. You know what I'm, but come on, I might, guys, be honest. Is, do you ever watch, like, one of these suspense movies or action, and you, you, you want to yell out to the guy or the girl, whoever the star is, and say, no, 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 don't do it, don't do it, don't do it. They can't hear you, obviously. It's a movie, okay? That's what I'm saying. I stopped taking drugs when I was three. But, I feel like tonight I wish I could do that and just tell David, stop. Like, yeah. don't, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. don't. I wish I, I wish we I wish we could. You know what I mean? It's like the one major st stain in his in his life. Don't and do and it. every everyone remembers it. Don't do it. By the way, I'm gonna say something to all of all of you who are listening. All of them, you and Peter, every everybody, me too. People will seldom remember how you began your journey, but they will always remember how you finish it. And that's something you need to remind yourself of sometimes. Um, I'll give you I'll give you a funny example. I, I just something random that comes that comes up to me. But uh, I used to um, back in the day used to watch a lot of baseball a lot of baseball um my dad actually my my dad uh is dominican and uh you know the um baseball is a big a big thing over there you know in the dominican republic and cuba all these places right well when i was growing up when i was growing up I, w I was into it a little bit you know i played a little little a little bit of a little league and um you know we played some I think I think I went one time to the Dodger camp. That was kind of cool, but when I when I put this guy's picture on the screen, some of you will remember him. Um, let me see if I can get it on the screen. And it's funny because oh, you say excuse me, Mama. You say excuse me. Uh one second. 
let me pull this up here. I don't know if you guys were into sports or were into baseball, but here, let me put his picture up here. Very much so. I'm not going to tell. I'm not going to tell you guys the name. I want to see if you know who this is. You see the picture? Just give me the picture. I'll tell you exactly who it is. Forget about uh-huh. it. Well, Peter's Canadian. I don't know, Peter. Do they play baseball in Canada? Yes, they do. Montreal Expos. Oh, okay. Toronto, Blue, well, Toronto Blue Jays. Toronto Blue Jays. That's right. Yeah, you guys. Oh man, awesome. How did you know that, Mark? I know baseball. Okay, th- I'm gonna. Ask, I'm not gonna say the name. Do you guys know him? Ah, you know him? Ah, you know him. You know him. Okay. Mr. Now, baseball, baby. What do you remember of him? Well, he was the he was one of the miss. They call him Mr. Hustle, but he he had a deal with uh, Bart Gianelli about the gambling thing. There it is. Yeah. Yep. And, and basically, he, uh, what happened? Didn't they take him his name out of the Hall of Fame or something like did. that? He should have been in the Hall of Fame for what he did. What he yeah. did afterwards, when he wasn't a player, is a different story. But nobody's going to break his records. Right. I mean, he was a phenomenal player. Mr. Hustle. I met him in Va- I met him in uh, Tahoe. I met wow. him in the in the sports book in Tahoe. Wow. Yeah. So the point I'm trying to make with Pete Rose, okay, that as great of a player as he was, and I'm sure you guys could look up all the awards that he's won in his lifetime, his careers, records, everything. People remember the scandal. They remember the you know what right. the the gambling, all all of that. Yeah, but it wasn't when he was playing baseball. Right. Yeah. Whatever. Whatever it was. I mean, the guy. Obviously, he was. He was doing something. That he was. He was gambling. Ricky Tiki said it right. He was absolutely. He was gambling. He was gambling when he was. Uh, when he was coach, I think. Wow. Saint says he ate Babe Ruth. Yeah, he ate Babe Ruth's record for sure. He was a great player. He and was Mr. Hustle. Mr. <laughs> Peter's Hustle. laughing. But the point I'm trying to make here is tonight. Uh, sadly, we are going to see the fall of. Uh, well, of he, someone in the Bible who was a he was literally a, I mean you know a hero almost I mean he didn't Pete Rose didn't 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 date uh, Fair Fawcett right I don't know yeah no this was Omar it, it, was, it was crazy Omar, Omar I think that King David still is a hero well the Bible calls him a man after God's heart and and that's the whole thing obviously he was if you if you ever, any one of you have read the Psalm fifty one uh that's a that's a prayer of a broken man right there psalm 51 is a prayer of someone who's broken and i think david god allowed this to happen to show i believe it was to show god's mercy and his long suffering his love towards towards us and even though we we can we can fall like that like a hard fall it could happen to it could happen to you peter it could happen to me to mark any one of us um it shows god's long suffering and obviously god used him uh in a mighty way even after this this uh tragedy we're going to see in a minute i mean it was what he did peter is in excuse i mean the the lengths of what he tried to do what he did do to, to try to cover up his sin that is just no. I mean, it's it's wow. It's a wow. It's a wow what he did. Well, let's get into it. Yeah. Well, let's do it. You're right. Let's I do almost it. don't want. I almost don't want to, but I we can't. It's like the. Uh, we must. We must. Yeah, I know we have to. All right, guys, let's pray. Peter, can you pray for us? I think Rain's got a nice prayer for us too. Sure does. Prayer. He's got a prayer of Saint Antiochus. Interesting. That name, uh, Rain, Antiochus Epiphanes, many believe he was the Antichrist, and uh, it's not actually the case. Uh, he, he doesn't fulfill the requirements, but Antiochus Epiphanes is mentioned. And uh, when we get to the book of Daniel, we'll mention that name again, Antiochus Epiphanes. was a real figure, by the way. Then uh, the name J- Judah the Hammer, that'll come up too. Mark might know that. Hanukkah. All right, guys, let's go. Um, Peter, the floor is yours. Thank you, Omar. Thank you, Rain. O ruler of all, word of the Father, O Jesus Christ, thou who art perfect, for the sake of the plenitude of thy mercy, never depart from me. 
but always remember in me, but always remain in me, thy servant. O Jesus, good shepherd of thy sheep, deliver me not over to the sedition of the serpent, and leave me not to the will of Satan, for the seed of corruption is in me. But do thou, O Lord, worshipful, worshipful God, holy King, Jesus Christ, as I sleep, guard me by the unwaning, by the unwaning light, thy Holy Spirit, by whom thou didst sanctify thy disciples, O Lord, grant me thine unworthy servant, thy salvation upon my bed. Open my mind with the light of understanding of thy holy gospel. My soul with the love of thy cross, my heart with the, with the purity of thy word, my body with thy passionless passion. Keep my thought in thy humility and raise me up at the proper time for thy glorification. For most glorified art thou together with thine un unoriginate father and the most and the most holy spirit unto the ages of ages one god amen 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 heavenly father thank you so much again for allowing us the opportunity to come together in fellowship to draw closer to you to seek you to learn to love you more and more I pray that you bless the hearing of your word, your precious word, that that your word will saturate our hearts and cause us to yearn more for you, cause us to want to learn to love you more in everything that we do, to seek you more. We love you, Lord, in Jesus' name we pray, amen. Okay, thank you, Peter, and thank you, Brother Rain, for that uh, awesome prayer. All right, you guys have your Bibles ready? Vente nueve, baby. Okay, Second Samuel chapter seven. I'm gonna have to. Yeah, hey, Crypto Rob's in the house. Judy's in the house. All right. Let's see. A lot of men in the Bible like ladies. Yeah, well, that's true, Saint. You're right. Um, in in the so, Bible. Yeah, no, I think they were, Karen and Kimberly were talking, I just saw. All right, uh, I'm the server where we normally see the Geneva Bible is down, which is okay. We, we have a backup, but the normally when, when we read, uh, we, have, we have a scanned copy of the Geneva 1560 that is archived. Uh, their servers are offline for whatever reason. I'm not sure. This is the first time that I'm seeing this. It could be that they're updating their computers. Uh, maybe they had some kind of power outage. I don't know. But we do have a backup. It's not a facsimile, uh, but it uh, it will do, and it'll it'll have the text, the text as well. I I don't I don't like to read from. Um, uh from out outside of the of the facsimile because sometimes you'll pull up Geneva 1560 online and it's not really a 1560 it's a 1599 and and there's different like anything in the King James if, if you just pull up King James like Peter has no clue where his King James came from he just bought someone gave him a King James Bible but you don't know wh what you're reading there's different there was different uh King James Bibles, different editions, different. Right, my, my my mom gave it to me. No, but I'm talking about where the the actual text came from. It could have been a Cambridge text. It could have been a uh, Oxford text. In other words, 
and sometimes they're they're hybrids. It's it's a it's a very it's very complex when you start looking at these little nuances and variants inside the King James Bible. And I didn't know this for years until one day I'm sitting in church with somebody and they have a King James. I have a King James when we're just reading. And there was like one or two little words that were different. I said, wait a minute, yours doesn't say what mine says. And we, we literally had to put them side by side. And I saw that it was different. So make a long story short, there are variants in the King James Bibles. If you, if you are not aware of that, well, now you know. Uh, but if you can get your hands on a pure Cambridge edition, it's called PCE, pure Cambridge edition. They're out there. Uh, that's as close as you're going to get to the uh, the fact the facsimile. And the facsimile, by the way, does have printing and typing and spelling errors. But I just like it because that's that was the first first run, and that's what it looked like. Anyhow, we don't have access to the uh, scanned. Oh. Wait a minute, it just came back online. Hold on. It's on. It's online. I just checked. Hold on. Hey, praise the Lord. Okay. Maybe they were just updating their servers. Hold on. So chap chapter seven, here it is. Did you call them, Mark? Thank you. Mark, I know Mr. S'mores, you can make things happen. I'm telling you. There it is. It's on. It's online, guys. Praise the Lord. Just push I sh it. I should say, maybe I could PDF this and save it so I don't have to worry about getting it from. I'm going to try to do that, guys. I'm going to try to do that. Good uh, good morning or good evening, uh, Ichiro Ao. Thank you. Thank you very much for being on. God the Son, Jesus Christ, says, all right, let's do it. Okay, guys, uh, I'll start. <clears throat> Man, I really wish we didn't have to read chapter 11 tonight, but we're going to have to. Let's get let's get the uh, show going. Let's go, guys. Mente Mark, nueve, real quick. Let's do it. Let's do it. Chapter 7, we're in 2 Samuel. All right. Well, tonight's reading will at least start out good. So, all right. There it is. Thank you, gentlemen. Mark, you have your ESV open? Both. Peter, you have your King James? Yes, sir. Okay. Let me, uh, yeah, Peter, check it Check it out. Uh, look into getting a pure Cambridge edition. If you can find one online, they're, they're pretty good. I'm going to, uh, I'll, um, I'll, I'll, look and, I'll look and see which one it is that my mom gave me. I don't think you can tell. There's no way to tell. Even the printing houses don't know. Oh, yeah? There's no, the only way to tell is by looking at a few. You know what? Someone asked me a few years ago if I can come up with a list of verses to, to, you know, like a telltale list of, you know, check this, 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 and that. And I said I'll do it. I just never did it. But I can probably come up with maybe a good 15, 20 verses that you guys can check to see if you have a, Cam a Cambridge or, or, or an Oxford. But, uh, okay, let me, well, we'll get to that. Chapter 7, let's begin. Thank you, guys. Let's pray. Oh, no, we prayed already. Thank you. Chapter 7, here we go. And we're, I'm reading from the Geneva 1560. And uh, we're going to go through to chapter 11. All right, let's begin. Uh, the intro says, David would build God a house, but is forbidden by the prophet Nathan. God putteth David in mind of his benefits. He promiseth continuance of his kingdom and posterity. So David will not, I mean, God will not allow King David to make him a house. And there's a reason for that. And we'll, we'll read about that in a second. But of course, we'll know, we'll, you guys know, I'm sure that it will be Solomon who will build the house. That's why we, we hear of Solomon's temple. Solomon was the one who was going to do it, so... Or is going to do it. All right, let's begin. All right, verse one. Afterward, <clears throat> when the king sat in his household, I'm sorry, in his house. Uh, let me go up to the previous verse. I I, I don't like when it, the chapter starts like that afterward because I don't remember where we left off last night. So, oh, oh, that's the conversation he had with. Uh, with his wife Michal, Saul's daughter, and she was, she was very uh, kind of poking fun at him, or kind of well, making making him feel bad because he was dancing when he celebrated the the return of the ark, and he said, "Oh, you you ain't seen nothing yet. And I'll do it again." And he basically just shut her down, and uh, there was a lot of tension there between the two of them. 
So anyhow, Michal, the daughter of Saul, had no child until the day of her death. Now it goes on in the next chapter where we're starting tonight afterward. When the king sat in his house and the Lord had given him rest round about from all his enemies, the king said unto Nathan the prophet, Behold, now I dwell, now I dwell in a house of cedar trees, and the ark of God remaineth within the curtains. Then Nathan said unto the king, Go, and do all that is in thine heart, for the Lord is with thee. And in the same night the word of the Lord came unto Nathan, saying, Go and tell my servant David, Thus saith the Lord, Shalt thou build me a house for my dwelling? For I have dwelt in no house since the time that I brought the children of Israel out of Egypt unto this day, but have walked in a tent and tabernacle. So God is telling Nathan, you see, don't you love it how God tells a prophet, a real prophet, exactly what to tell somebody? Not vague stuff, not vague like, oh, the Lord says you're going to get a, you know, something special is coming in your life and, you know, all this, this, this stuff, that the, this show that these quote-unquote uh, modern day prophets say right a bunch of nonsense this is very clear god tells nathan to tell david this he says shall i build a house shalt thou build me a house for my dwelling for i have dwelt in no house since the time that i brought the children of israel out of egypt unto this day but have walked in a tent and tabernacle in all the places wherein i have walked with all the children of israel spake spake i one word Spake I one word with any of the tribes of Israel when I commanded the judges to feed my people Israel? Question mark. So God is asking some rhetorical questions here to to David uh, by way of Nathan. And let's see where it goes. He asks uh, here again, he continues. He says, Or said I, why build ye not me an house of cedar trees? Now therefore, so say unto my servant David, this is God talking now to Nathan, now therefore, so say unto my servant David, thus saith the Lord of hosts, I took thee from the sheep coat, following the sheep, that thou mightest be ruler over my people, be ruler over my people, over Israel. So God is reminding David, David, you remember what, what you used to do. You should just be, a, you know, a, taking care of the sheep, and you were out there, you know, uh, running around on the fields with the sheep, and now I made you ruler over Israel. And the whole thing is God is reminding him that all this time nobody has built him a house to reside in. He was just going from, as the Israelites journeyed through the desert, they would move the tabernacle from place to place, and every time they would have that whole elaborate ceremony of taking up the, you know, the tent, uh, taking it down, uh, repositioning it it was this whole you know and it was just a mobile it was literally a mobile home it was a mobile place the tent it just moved but he had no he had no fixed place now verse 8 says now therefore so say unto my servant david thus saith the lord of hosts i took thee from the sheep coat following the sheep that thou mightest mightest be ruler over my people over my over israel and i was with thee whithersoever wheresoever thou hast walked and have destroyed all thine enemies out of thy sight and have made thee a great name like unto the name of the great men that are in the earth. Also I will appoint a place for my people Israel and will plant it that they may dwell in a place of their own and move no more. Neither shall wicked people trouble them any more as before time and since the time that I set judges over my people of Israel. So God is reminding him, I've, all, I've delivered you guys. I've been there for you. Uh, you've had victories. And I will give thee rest from all thine enemies, he says. Also the Lord telleth thee, also the Lord telleth thee that he will make thee an house. Also the Lord telleth thee that he will make thee an house. And when the days, and when thy days be fulfilled, thou shalt sleep with thy fathers. And I will set Oh, so God is telling him, David, when you die, when you sleep and go with your fathers, I will set up thy seed. So his posterity, well, of course, we know that's going to be Solomon. I will set up thy seed after thee, which shall proceed out of thy body and will establish his kingdom. He shall build a house for my name and I will establish the throne of his kingdom forever. 
These are very, very clear prophecies, okay? God is not telling David this directly. God is telling Nathan, who's relaying it word for word to King David. Pretty accurate. And everything that that God is saying is about to happen. We know that. So verse 13, he says, He, Solomon, shall build a house for my name, and I will, I will establish the, the throne of his kingdom forever. I will be his father, and he shall be my son. And if he sin, I will chasten him with the rod of men and with the plagues of the children of men. But my mercy shall not depart away from him as I took it from Saul, whom I have put away before thee. So he's saying, I'm not going to treat your son like I treated Saul. I took I took my mercy from Saul, and uh, Saul really messed up big time. I mean, we just finished reading all the things that Saul did. Uh, he, he just basically refused to heed God's commands. He rejected Samuel's advice. He killed all those priests, or he was responsible for killing all those priests. Uh, just his... His thirst for revenge and his hatred and jealousy of David. I mean, Saul was just bad, bad guy, dude. And then, of course, him going to the witch of Endor and seeking uh, supernatural means to communicate with the dead and all those things that God had forbid. Anyhow, so he says, but my mercy, God says, but my mercy shall not depart away from him, Solomon, as I took it from Saul, whom I have put away before thee. Verse 16. And thine house shall be established and thy kingdom forever before thee. Well, that's right. That's right forever because from this line we know Jesus comes. And that, that, uh, that kingdom will never, ever fall. Uh, so, and thine house shall be established and thy kingdom forever before thee. Even thy throne shall be, sta- shall be established forever. You can see the notes there on the side. Thank you, Geneva translators. This was begun in Solomon as a figure, but accomplished in Christ. Amen to that. Verse 17. According to all these words and according to all this vision, Nathan spake thus unto David. So better than FedEx. Okay, this is Nathan coming directly to King David saying, hey, I have a special message for you from God. Verse 18, then King David went in and sat before the Lord and said, Who am I, O Lord God, and what is mine house that thou hast brought me hitherto? And this was yet a small thing in thy sight, O Lord God. Therefore thou hast spoken also of thy servant's house for a great while, but doeth this, doeth, doth this appertain to man, O Lord God? I'd like to get an alternate reading on that one. I'm not clear on that, Mark. Uh, can we get uh, verse 19? Actually, why don't you get verse 18 and 19, Mark, if you can read that for us in the uh, ESV, please. Then King David went in and sat before the Lord and said, Who am I, O Lord God, and what is my house that you have brought me thus far? And yet this was a small thing in your eyes, O Lord God. You have spoken also of your servant's house for a great while to come. And this is instruction for mankind, O Lord God. So God is telling David he's going to build him a house or his kingdom and his posterity, of course, Solomon, his immediate son. And then throughout that, throughout the generations, his kingdom will be established uh and i guess maybe david is just wondering why me god what did i do to deserve such a thing i think that's kind of what this is saying i don't know if peter you have a take on that is that what we're seeing in this passage i think so i think so yeah okay i thought so it's just the the reading was a little vague mark your esv is is almost saying exactly what i mean it doesn't you know, the ESV is interesting because sometimes I would think it would be like a very, uh, like a, almost like the NIV is very, very hip, very like street language. It doesn't, you know, it's not a very good translation. Sometimes but it, it matches everything that you say in the Geneva, sometimes. And same with the yeah. King James. It's hit and miss. Right. 
Very interesting. Okay. So anyhow, I think that's that was the, the meat of it. Uh, let me finish this chapter and then we'll give uh, Peter the floor. One second. All right. Verse uh, 19. Go to the next verse here. Thank you, guys. Verse 20. And what can David say more unto thee? For the Lord, for thou, Lord God, knowest thy servant. For thy word's sake and according to thine own heart hast thou done all these great things to make them known unto thy servant. So David's just very in awe. He's just having a hard time accepting or understanding why why me, God? Why did you choose me? And he's very, um, I just think his heart is overwhelmed and, and just an incredible, incredible uh, thing to, to know that God, God is going to use him in a mighty way. For thy word's sake, and according to thine own heart, hast thou done all these great things to make them known unto thy servant. Wherefore, thou art great, O Lord God, for there is none like thee, neither is there any God besides thee, according to all that we have heard with our ears. And what one people in, and what one people in the earth is like thy people, like Israel. So he's saying, there's no one like that. God, you have chosen us whose God went and redeemed them of himself that they might be his people and that he might make him a name and do for you great things and terrible for thy land, O Lord, even for thy people whom thou redeemest to thee out of Egypt from the nations and their gods. So that was a question. He says, And what one people in the earth is like thy people, like Israel? Question whose God went and redeemed them to himself, that they might be his people, and that he might make him a name, and do for you great things and terrible for thy land, O Lord, even for thy people whom thou redeemest to thee out of Egypt, from the nations and their gods. Question. So it was a question both the time. He's just, he's just overwhelmed. He's just saying, God, why and how? And you know, It's amazing. There is no other, there is no God like you. And he's just he's really taken aback by everything that's happening right now very early in his career. And by the way, everything's going to go smooth for David for the next couple of chapters until we get to 11. Uh, chapter 11. Okay, verse 24. For thou hast ordained thy people Israel to be thy people forever, and thou, Lord, art become their God. Now therefore, O Lord God, confirm forever the word that thou hast spoken concerning thy servant and his house, and do as thou hast said, and let thy name be magnified forever by them that shall say the Lord of hosts is the God over Israel. And let the house of thy servant David be established forever. Uh, interesting. Uh, for thou, O Lord of hosts, God of Israel, has, has revealed unto thy servant, saying, I will build thee an house. Therefore hath thy servant been bold to pray this prayer unto thee. Therefore now, O Lord God, for thou art God, and thy words be true, and thou hast told this goodness unto thy servant. Therefore now let it please thee to bless the house of thy servant, that it may continue forever before thee. For thou, O Lord God, hast spoken it, and let the house of thy servant be blessed forever with thy blessing. Of course, David is referring to himself, right? Let the house of thy servant, me, David, be blessed forever with thy blessing. Hmm. Amen. Chapter 8, David overcometh the Philistines and other strange, strange nations and maketh them tributaries to Israel. What does that mean? Slaves? Perhaps, I think. Peter, can we, uh, can you, can you read the uh, chapter 8 from the King James Bible, please? Yes, sir. Yes, Let me sir. see if Mark, Mark, uh, are we good on chapter seven? Any issues? Any uh, no. questions? No We're issues. Good? No. All right. Uh, chapter. I'd like to say something, Omar. Yes, sir. Um, I think that, I think that for everybody that is in fellowship with us, um, and uh, coming together and reading the word, I, th I think that God uses all of us mightily i think god uses all of us mightily but i don't i think for the most part we don't realize it we don't realize that we are being used mightily but i think for the most part we just really don't realize it 
Yeah, you know, here's the thing, though. I mean, we that's a great point, Peter. You know, God, God, God can use, I mean, even he used Pharaoh. <laughs> Pharaoh was a, a bad guy, but God used him. Uh, God can use anybody or anyone. And I think what happened with David, he just felt so unworthy and at the same time appreciative and, and overwhelmed. And so all of this, uh, God, God basically told him, David, you're going to be, the, you're, you're the one, you know, I'm just going to, everything's going to come through you. And, uh, remember that's the line where Jesus comes from thy throne. You can follow, so you can trace you can trace Jesus Christ all the way back down to the line of David. And and that's where, you know, obviously the Messiah came from. There, and there's a reason there's a reason why Joseph was, was chosen. By the way, even though Joseph was not uh Jesus' biological, but there was there were also um generational blessings that came you know through 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 joseph's line so we'll get to that too when we get to the book of luke when we get to matthew we'll talk about you know all these names that you'll you'll recognize from the gene genealogy of jesus christ it's amazing absolutely amazing every single name and person that was involved up until the point of jesus coming it was unbelievable there was not one there was not one piece of that puzzle that did not did not have some miracle attached to it. Like God moved literally. He moved mountains to to make it all happen perfectly. It was it was beautiful. So getting back to God using us, yeah, He could God will He'll use anything and anyone. And I think when you come to realize the um you know the depths of how God can use us, that's that's I think what, what David was feeling, Peter. Yeah. Kimberly says David was a broken dude in many ways. And he knew it. Yeah. Yeah. He was. He was. All right. Uh, chapter eight. You ready? Yes, sir. Okay. We'll be fought. Marco, follow, follow in the ESV. I'll have the Geneva uh, 1560 online. And then uh, you'll be reading from the King James. Do we have an intro? Uh yeah, it just says uh, David overcomes the Philistines and strange nations and maketh them tributaries to Israel. Got it. Thank you, Omar. Mm -hmm. Okay, we have Second uh, Samuel chapter eight, verse one from the KJV. And af after this, it came to pass that David smote the Philistines and subdued them, and David took Methegamah out of the hand of the Philistines, and he smote Moab and measured them with a line and casting them down to the ground even with two lines measured he put to death and with one full line to keep alive and so the moabites became david's servants and brought gifts david smote also hadadazar the son of rahab king of zobah as he went to recover his border at the river Euphrates. And David took from him a thousand chariots and 700 horsemen and 20,000 footmen. And David hoofed all the chariot horses, but reserved of them for a hundred chariots. And when the Syrians of Damascus came to Sikor, Hadadazar, king of Zobah, David slew the Syrians, two and twenty thousand men. <coughs> then, then David put garrisons in Syria of Damascus, and the Syrians became servants to David and brought gifts. And the Lord preserved David whithersoever he went. And David took the shields of gold that were on the servants of Hadadazar, and brought them to Jerusalem. And from Betab and from Barothia, the cities of Hadadazar, King David took exceeding much brass. When Toy king of Hamath 
heard that David had smitten all the host of Hadadazar, then Troy sent Jeram, his son, unto King David to salute him and to bless him because he had fought against Hadadazar and smitten him. For Hadadazar had wars with Troy, and Jeram brought with him vessels of silver and vessels of gold and vessels of brass, which also King David did dedicate unto the Lord with the silver and the gold that he had dedicated of all nations which he subdued, of Syria and of Moab and of the children of Ammon and of the Philistines and of Amalek and of the spoil of Hadadazar, son of Rahab, king of Zeboth. And David got him a name when he returned from smiting of the Syrians in the Valley of Salt, being 18,000 men. And he put garrisons in Edom. Throughout all Edom put he garrisons, and all they of Edom became David's servants. And the Lord preserved David whithersoever he went. And David reigned over all Israel. And David executed judgment and justice unto all his people. And Joab, the son of Zeruiah, was over the host. And Jehoshaphat, the son of Ahilud, was recorder. And Zadok, the son of Ahetab, and Ahimelech, the son of Abathar, were priests. And Sariah was the scribe. And Benaiah, the son of Jehoiada, Jehoiada, was over both the Cherethites and the Pelethites. And David's sons were chief rulers. Uh, okay, we've got uh, some discrepancy, not discrepancy, just variations on the names of the cities and the people. Can I go over those real quick? Mark, I don't know if you picked those up. Yeah, they've changed a little. Uh, let me just point them out real quick if you guys m missed it. Uh, Peter, in verse 1, uh, can you read verse 1 out of the King James real quick? Yes, yeah, sir. Please. And after this came to pass that David smote the Philistines and subdued them. And David took Messiah. Okay, there's the, that's the one. Right, let me show you what I what, Stop right there. Masegama. What it says in the, in the Geneva, it says this. After this, David smote the Philistines, comma, and subdued them, comma. And David took the bridle of bondage out of the hand of the Philistines. The bridle of bondage. There's a letter here, a note. It says, so that they paid no more tribute. So the bridle of bondage. So David took the bridle of bondage out of the hand of the Philistines. What do you have, Mark, in verse in verse 1? Uh, what is the yeah, ESV? Same thing, as, same thing as Peter. It says, meth, methagama. Methagama. And David what? took methagama out of the hand of the Philistines. What yes. is that? That's the King yeah, James? Yeah, mine's yeah. the same as King James. Hold on, hold on. Not. Hold on. Very interesting. I do not remember that. Second Samuel uh, 8. Methagama. Meth 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 what is that? It sounds, it sounds like something that, that would be like the word of the day on Sesame Street. It's, it's spelled me, me the gamma. Me the you know what, it, it, let me see. Uh, G A M M A H. Okay, it, it appears, FYI, and this is hard. It only appears one time in the entire Bible. So we don't really have much to go off of. Uh, the definition in Hebrew is a mother city or a bridal of the mother city. For example, control or authority. Um, figurative means to control. Mentioned in Second Samuel chapter eight verse one. Uh, man, this is Omar, a hard one. I, Omar, when I think of when I think of Methagama, I think of Snuffleupagus. <laughs> Guys, I 
it's funny because I don't remember this name and I have a King James Bible. I just don't remember it. Methagama. Methagama. Old, Old Testament. Uh, man. I mean, I can show it to you guys. It just, it, I don't know where to go with this. But the King, the, the Geneva, the Geneva boys, they didn't even mention it. They used to call it a bridal. Yeah, bridal is, is a little easier to say than Methagama. Wow. All right. Well, we learned a new word today, I guess, right? Bridal Meth of bondage. Bridal of bondage. Yeah. Took the bridal of bondage out of the hand of the Philistines. Methagama. Methagama. I'm sure I'm not pronouncing it right, but. Meta Sounds good to me. Methagama. Methagama. Sounds good to me. Uh, like Mark, me. Mark, I like can I. Let me show it to Mark. Maybe Mark can help us with the pronunciation. Hold on. Here it is. Me Mark. the gamma. Me the gamma. Here it says. Uh, Me the gamma. Can you see it? Yeah. Me the gamma. Meta, met, met, it's meta ga. Me the gamma. Ama. Ama. Ha ama. Ha ama. Met, met, metag. Yeah. And then, and then, ha ama. Metak ama. Ha -ama. Ha -ama. Wow, wow, unbelievable. Okay, well, I learned. I get maybe my I, my eyes just never focused on it, but man, I've never seen this word before. You see how you be, how you miss stuff sometimes, guys. When you're reading the Bible, you just wait a minute. Where'd that come from? Omar, you Omar, you have seen that word because you've read the Bible 18 times. Yeah, but I don't, Peter. I don't remember this word. I do not remember well, we're, it. We're gonna just have to start testing. That's it. Man, this is crazy. It's like like what do they call this? Uh, what do they call that? The uh, Mandela. Memory. So Mandela, like but Mandela, oh, <laughs> Mandela. Oh man, yeah. <laughs> oh, wow. man. That, that Mandela thing is crazy. That is crazy. There's a whole internet movement on this Mandela thing. Anyhow, <laughs> all right, guys. Uh, so that was one of the uh, the things that I caught when you read, and then in verse uh, five and six, if we can go there real quick, just real quick, let's, uh verses five and six. Um, don't tell me you have less than twenty-two thousand. No, no. What what do we got here, uh, Mark? In verse five and six of the uh, ESV, verses five and six. Yeah, David got a lot of gifts. And when and when the Syrians yeah. masses came to help, had the Syrians, the Syrians. Did you catch that? So the Geneva says the Aramites. The Syrians. So the Syrians. So that was a, an an alternate name, I guess. Same, or, as, the James, same as the King James. Okay. Okay, uh, so keep reading. Then came the Syrians. Then came then, then came Syrians of Damascus came to help. Had a had a had a Dizar, had a Dizar. king of Zor, Zorba. David struck down twenty two thousand men of the Syrians. Aramites, go on. Then David put garrisons in Aram of Damascus, and the Syrians became servants to David and brought tribute. And the Lord gave victory to David wherever he went yeah that's interesting because you you mentioned in verse 6 aram aram of damascus but then the esv goes back to syrians you see aram and aramites uh, the aramites are from aram obviously a it starts the same you know a r a m but your verse 6 mentions uh, Aram, I think, in the first part, and then Syrians in the second part. So these are just uh, variations, but I, the, uh, older names for the same thing. It wasn't. This is not a contradiction. It's just like some of the places uh, that the Bible mentions in the newer readings will be an updated name. Same that happens here where we live. I mean, Valley Village, Peter, where you live, used to be called North Hollywood. Now it's yeah. Valley Village, so it ha this happens all the time. Where I used to live, where I was born, and ra well, not born, but raised, was uh, Sepulveda. Now it doesn't exist. It's called North Hills, California. Sepulveda doesn't even know. No one knows where Sepulveda is. It doesn't. There's no city named Sepulveda in in LA County anymore. So, 
it is what it is. Names change, but God doesn't. Amen to that. All right. Other than that, uh, I don't think I have anything else here that that stood out. It, it was pretty much all all the same. All right. Uh, let's go. Chapter nine. David restores 13. all the fifteen. Okay, it's a short one. Okay. Thirteen. 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 Thank you, guys. I'll be reading from the Geneva 1560. Let me go ahead and put the words on the screen. And we are in chapter 9 of 2 Samuel. Chapter 9, verse 1. The intro says, David restored all the lands of the... Ah, Mephibosheth, the son of Jonathan. So this is all basically Saul's. Saul's uh, lineage, his posterity. Saul's dead, of course, and so is Jonathan, his son. So David restores all the lands of Saul to Mephibosheth, the son of Jonathan. So Mephibosheth would be Saul's grandson. Uh, he appointed Ziba to see to the prophet of his lands. Verse 1. Let's begin. And David said, Is there yet any man left of the house of Saul that I may show him mercy for Jonathan's sake? Remember, David and Jonathan were very close friends. I mean, they, like brothers, they they had just a very deep uh, respect and love for each other. And David, now he's king, he wants to do something for his long-gone friend, Jonathan. He says, Is there any of his family alive? Verse 2, and there was of the household of Saul, verse 2, of the household of Saul, one second, a servant whose name was Ziba. And when they had called him unto David, the king said unto him, Art thou Ziba? And he said, I, thy servant, am he. Then the king said, Remaineth there yet none of the house of Saul on whom I may show the mercy of God? Ziba then answered the king, Jonathan hath yet a son, lame of his feet. Then the king said unto him, Where is he? And Ziba said unto the king, Behold, he is in the house of Machir, the son of Amiel of Lodabar. Verse 5. Then king David sent and took him out of the house of Machir, the son of Amiel of Lodabar. And when and when now when Mephibosheth, the son of Jonathan, the son of Saul, was come unto David, he fell on his face and did reverence. And David said, Mephibosheth? And he answered, Behold, thy servant. Then David said unto him, Fear not, for I will surely show thee kindness for Jonathan thy father's sake, and will restore thee all the fields of Saul thy father, and thou shalt eat bread at my table. Continue. Did, did you guys catch that? He says, first of all, in the beginning of verse 7, he says, David said unto him, Fear not, for I will surely show thee kindness for Jonathan thy father's sake, because Jonathan was his father. But listen carefully. And will restore thee all the fields of Saul thy father. So who's the father? Is it Saul or is it Jonathan? Well, if you know the Bible and you read it, you'll, you'll understand that Saul obviously was his grandfather. But in Bible language, when it says Saul is thy father, it doesn't mean necessarily an immediate father. It means you're in the line of Saul. You're in the line of King David. You're in the line of so-and-so or so-and-so. And so that's why it can be confusing for someone who doesn't know how to read the Bible and they look at a verse like this and they'll say, oh, the Bible is full of contradictions look at verse 7 it says david had or mephibosheth had two dads no he didn't you just don't know how to read the bible sir so it's okay to school people you know and and uh pastor santos just so you guys know the reason why the bible is so special to him is because he used to be an atheist and he uh 
he remember one day he gave la- uh, these two ladies that kept knocking on his door asking him if he knew if he knew for sure where he was going when he died if he knew about heaven and and he was so angry at them one day he decided to listen and talk to him and he said look you give me that dumb book and give me a week and come back and i'll prove to you it's full of lies and so he he accepted their bible he read it a week a week goes by they knock on his door he opens the door and his eyes are just welled up in tears and he asks them to forgive him for being so mean to them and right there he uh he fell on his knees and asked God to forgive him and to come into his heart and he got saved and he's been a Christian for psh, almost 50 years now maybe more and now his his passion is to uh to translate the Spanish Bible uh into an accurate more reliable version and that's pretty much what he's been doing so that's what you hear him and I read but why why do I mention that because you know, atheists, uh, they're more than welcome to read the Bible, even if they misread it. It's okay. The Bible says the Word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. And uh, it's able to break even the toughest hearts, I'll tell you so. Anyhow, I just wanted to point that out. Then David said unto him, Fear not, for I will surely show thee kindness for Jonathan thy father's sake, and will restore thee all the fields of Saul thy father. Thou shalt eat bread at my table continually. So David said, basically, hey, hey, Mephibosheth, because of your your dad and because of your grandpa, I'm going to take care of you for the rest of your life. Whatever you need, just, just say, say the word. Verse 8, And he bowed himself and said, What is thy servant, that thou shouldest look upon such a dead dog as I am? He's saying, why, why me, king? Why are you doing this to me or for me? Then the king called Ziba, Saul's servant, and said unto him, I have given unto thy master's son all that pertain, all, all that pertain to Saul and to all his house. Verse 10. Thou therefore and thy sons and thy servants shall till the land for him and bring in that thy master's son may have food to eat. Thou therefore and thy sons and thy servants shall till the land for him and bring in that makes bring in that thy master's son may have food to eat. And Mephibosheth thy master's son shall eat bread always at my table. Now Ziba had 15 sons and 20 servants. Okay. Remember, Ziba is Saul's servant. Wow, Ziba had 15 sons and 20 servants. Then said Ziba unto the king, According to all that my, that my lord the king hath commanded his servant, so shall thy servant do, that Mephibosheth may eat at my table. Mm, okay, that's interesting. Then said Ziba unto the king, comma, according to all that my lord the king hath commanded his servant, comma, so shall thy servant do, that Mephibosheth may eat at my table as one of the king's sons. Uh, maybe I'm not understanding who is talking. Okay, let me get an alternate reading from Mark on this one. Verse 11, guys. Um, Mark, can you read verse 11, please? Then Ziba said to the king, According to all that my lord the king commands his servant, so will your servant do. So, whoa. So, Mephibosheth. Mephibosheth ate at David's table like one of the king's son. Right, ate at David's table, right? At David's table. David's table, yeah. Huh. Because it, it almost sounds here like Ziba's talking. Uh, well, it says, Then Ziba said to the king, According to all that my lords, all my the lord, the king commands his servant, so will, uh-huh. you serve it, so will your servant do. So Meshebabeth ate at David's table 
mm -hmm. like one of the king's sons. What's interesting is that, and I'll ask Peter to read the, the King James, but here in the Geneva, I'll read it again carefully. Then said Ziba unto the king, According to all that my lord the king hath commanded his servant, so shall thy servant do, that Mephibosheth may eat at my table as one of the king's sons. That, that's what throw me off, the my. It almost sounds like Ziba is saying, Mephibosheth will eat at my table. Uh, now I know Ziba is a servant of the king, Saul, who's now dead, of course. But now, uh, you know, David is the one who's in power, and David's doing this out of kindness for memory of his best friend, Jonathan, who's yours, now dead. Yours, yours is the uh, same as the King James. Hold on. Peter, what do you got in the King James in verse 11? Yeah, I, I don't see where your uh, confusion is, lies. In okay. verse 11, in first, who's in, talking? In verse who's 11, talking in verse 11? It, okay, in verse 11, the first sentence, Ziba is speaking. The second sec, the second sentence, David is speaking. I don't see that. Can you read it? Okay, let me read it. Yeah, let me read it in the King James. Um, then, then said Ziba unto the king, according to all that my lord the king hath commanded his servant so shall thy servant do second sentence as for as for as for mephibosheth said the king he shall eat at my table as one of the king's sons okay yeah that's not what i'm getting from the geneva geneva is saying something a little bit different and I, I i don't i don't like it because it's it makes it sound like here let me let me read it carefully then said Ziba unto the king, comma, according to all that my lord the king hath commanded his servant, comma, so shall thy servant do, comma, that Mephibosheth may eat at my table, comma, as one of the king's sons. Oh yeah, I, I can see <laughs> right. I can see that. I can see how that's very um can, very confusing. Yeah, There's that's, a, that's, all, that's all one sentence. That whole thing is one sentence. Right. And on the side here, it does say, there's a little note here that says that Mephibosheth may have all things at commandment, at commandment as becoming the king's son. Right. So Mephibosheth is going to be, in essence, like a son. David's going to take him as a son, almost yes. adopting it, like adopting him. Yeah. But I, yeah. the Geneva reading sounds like Ziba saying, oh, yeah, Mephibosheth will lead out with us because yeah, Ziba, that, right? Yeah, very, very confusing the way it's written in, in the Geneva. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right, right. So I'm going to go with you guys on this one. Uh, I like the reading on, on both. Mark, can you read yours one more time? On both of them? No, just 11, just 11, just on the ESV. Then Ziba said to the king, According to all that my lord the king commands his servant, so will your servant do. So Meshebabeth ate at David's table, comma, like one of the king's sons. That's a perfect reading. That's a perfect exact. Uh, I mean, that's the, the context yeah. is is pretty much spelling this out for us. So yeah, the Geneva. I I would say on this one, I'm gonna I'm gonna minus a point on that one. <laughs> but, yeah, Mark, can you mark that down, Mark? Uh, Hold on, I just took it off. Boy, that's easy. Yeah, to okay. it off, yeah. All, right. Calm, baby. All right. All right. Let me go to verse twelve, guys. Well, man, that's good. Okay, Dude, thank you. Take it off. <laughs> One second. Oh man, you guys are funny. Okay, uh, verse twelve, uh, and we'll finish this chapter here. Uh, Mephibosheth also had a young son named Micah. Oh, did you guys know that Mephibosheth had a son? So that would be Saul's great grandson. Mephibosheth also had a young son named Micah, and all that dwelled in the house of Ziba were servants unto Mephibosheth. Thank you, Queen. Were servants unto Mephibosheth, and Mephibosheth dwelt in Jerusalem, for he did eat continually at the king's table, not Ziba's, at the king's table, and was lame on both his feet. I didn't know he was lame on both his feet. I think he got dropped on his head or something happened. Uh, and that word lame, I would probably look it up. Uh, what did it mean 500 years ago? I'm sure it 
doesn't mean what people use it for today. I know that word gets thrown around a lot, but anyhow, uh, chapter 10, we're almost at the horrible, horrible chapter uh, of David's life. And man, uh, we'll get to it right now. But before that, Peter's going to read chapter 10 for us. The messengers of David are valley, vil, villainously entreated of the king of Ammon. Joab is sent against the Ammonites. All right, chapter 10. Let's uh, go ahead and get to that. Peter, are you ready? Yes, sir. Thank you, Omar. All right, Mr. S'mores, you got your ESV? Absolutely. All right, Peter, chapter 10. The floor is yours. Thank you, Mr. Omar. Mm -hmm. And we have uh, 2 Samuel, chapter 10, verse 1, from the King James Version. And it came to pass after this that the king of the children of Ammon died. And Hanan, his son, reigned in his stead. And David said, I will show kindness unto Hanan, the son of Nasha. Okay, I'm kind of confused. So another one of these situations, uh, Nahash, Nahash, is that, is that, uh his grandfather or something uh so we have uh, here in chapter 10 uh nahash yeah he is i don't I, I think he's no he's of ammon nahash is the is the king of ammon um Okay. He's the king, yeah. And by the way, yeah. De so yeah, he's he's the king of Ammon. Okay, so okay, he, he he uh he apparently when when David was was in need, uh, this king helped him. And you'll read that in the next verse, in verse two. Okay, um, so so where it says. Where it says children of Ammon, uh, Ammon is a city. The Ammonites. Yeah. Yeah. So Nahash, Nahash and, is is the king, or Nahash of Ammon. He's the king. Nahash, Nahash is the king. Okay, got it. Got you got it. it. So, yeah. so this is, I guess, David is paying him back for for a favor that that he did yeah. for him. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. You remember when when people do something really special, right? Correct. Yeah. Okay, I'll take it from the top. Thank you, Omar. Yep. And it came to pass after this that the, the king of the children of Ammon died, and Hanan, his son, reigned in his stead. Then said David, I will show kindness unto him, and the son of Nahash, as his father showed kindness, kindness unto me. And David sent to comfort him by the hand of his servants for his father. And David's servants came to the land of the children of Ammon. And the princes of the children of Ammon said to Hanan, their lord, thinkest thou that David doth honor thy father, that he hath sent comforters unto thee? Hath not David rather sent his servants unto thee to search the city and to spy it out and to overthrow it? Wherefore Hanan took David's servants and shaved off the one half of their beards <coughs> And cut off their garments in the middle, even their buttocks, and send them away. When they told it unto David, he sent to meet them, because the men were greatly ashamed. And the king said, Tarry at Jericho until your beards be grown, and then return. And when the children uh, of Ammon... Uh, Peter, I, I, I had to stop here. Did, did they just cut, yeah. cut the back of their pants off? To expose, yeah. yeah what? Yeah. And they shaved half their beards. Yeah. Mark, can you? I I need to hear that in Mark's uh, Mark's rendition, the ESV. Which verse was that, Mark? Uh, I mean, Peter, with the is it verse four. Yeah. This is this is wild. You ready, uh, Mark? Yeah. Can you go ahead and give that to us, please? Hey, you both get your razors out, okay? <laughs> That's so wild. David, so Hanan took David's servants and shaved off half of the half the beard of each and cut off their garments in the middle and their hips 
and sent them away. What? That is very strange. So Hanan took David's servants and shaved off half the beard of each and cut off their garments in the middle and their and their hips and sent them away. I think now this what the other ones are saying because that doesn't make sense. They, this they, were, they, they were rendered a subject of ridicule. So so Peter, this was because they suspected that David had our ulterior motives. They said, "Oh no, David's yeah. not here to help us. David he, is here to spy on us, and you guys are you're his spies." And so they did this. They made him shave their beards, and apparently half their beards, half their beards, half their beards and wow, yeah, that'd be a little embarrassing, uh, Mark, to, to have them do that. It's just like, what is going on here? You know what, Omar? It's it's um it's much 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 better than falling upon falling upon them and smiting them, killing them. How do you explain this to your wife? Listen, I'd rather have I'd rather have half a beard than no pulse. Peter, but you're walking in with no pants. Well, just tell them your razor broke. <laughs> okay, this is wild. Oh man. Okay. Um, where so let's. Uh, where did you find that picture? I I I don't know, Peter. This is a little too close for comfort. Okay, let's uh let's get to the. Can, can you read the text one more time? Hold on. Reina, did you know that this part with? Oh no, I, I'm not gonna tell my wife. This is there's some comical stuff in the Bible, guys. I just I'm sorry. All right. Uh, Peter, take it from the verse three, and then go. Just start from verse three. I want to. I want to follow this with you. Thank you. Yeah, verse three. Then the princes of the children of Ammon said unto Hanan, their lord, Thinkest thou that David has to death honor thy father, and that he sent comforters unto thee? Hath not David rather sent his servants unto thee to search the city and to spy it out and to and to overthrow it? Wherefore Hanan took David's servants and shaved off the one half of their beards and cut off their garments in the middle, even to their buttocks, and sent them away. When they told it under when they told it under David, he sent to meet them because the, the men were greatly ashamed. And the king said, "Tarry at Jericho until your beards be grown, and then return." And when the children of Ammon saw that they stank before David, the children of Ammon sent and hired the Syrians of Bethrohab and the Syrians of Zobah, 20,000 footmen, and of King Maeka, a thousand men, and of Ishtab, 12,000 men. And when David heard of it, he sent Joab and all the host of mighty men. And the children of Ammon came out and put the battle in array at the entering in of the gate. And the Syrians of Zobah and of Rahab and Ishtab and Maekah uh, were by themselves in the field. When Joab saw that the front of the battle was against him before and behind, he chose of all the choice men of Israel and put them in array against the Syrians. And the rest of the people he delivered in, into the hands of Abishaiah, his brother, that he might put them in array against the children of Ammon. And he said, If the Syrians be too strong for me, then thou shalt help me. But if, the, uh, but if the children of Ammon be too strong for thee, then I will come and help thee. Be of good courage, and let us play the men, of, the men for our people and for the cities of our God. And the Lord do that which seemeth him good. And Joab draw and, and Joab drew nigh and the people that were with him unto the battle against the Syrians, and they fled before him. And when the children of Ammon saw that the Syrians were fled, and then fled they also before Abishai, and entered into the city. So Joab returned from the children children of Ammon. And came to Jerusalem. And when the Syrians saw that they 
were smitten before Israel, they gathered themselves together. And Hadarazer sent and brought out the Syrians that were, were beyond the river, and they came to Halam. And Sopak, the captain of the host of Hadarazer, went before them. And when it was told David, he gathered all Israel together and passed over Jordan and came to Halam. And the Syrians set themselves in array against David and fought with him. And the Syrians fled before Israel, and David slew the men of 700 chariots of the Syrians and 40,000 horsemen, and smote Shobach, the captain of their host, who died there. And when all the kings that were servants to Adarazer saw that they were smitten before Israel, they made peace with Israel and served them. So the Syrians feared to help the children of Ammon anymore. Okay, Mark, how are we looking? So far, so good, except for half the face. Wow. All right, Pete. So, victory for uh, David. Victory for King David, and uh, wow, that was a big. That was a big. And all of this started because of suspicion, right? David did nothing wrong. Just they, th they thought that hey, David's here. He's sending his guys to spy on us. So it was really, I, I guess. Who who would who would you say? Was the catalyst in the story to start all this? Was it that what guy Hanan or what was his name? Hanan. Yeah. Han, how do you spell? How did you spell that? Hanan. H. Well, it was. The guy, it was. It the, was his servant. It was, it the was guy that servant. was suspicious. The guy was the, the guy suspicious. He was the one. It was the princes. The princes of the children of of Amman. Yeah. So it wasn't. It wasn't it was Hanan himself. It, it was it was the princes. Um, the, the, the no, princes but I I, I, th I, I think it, it, I think it was Hanan though. I, I look it up. Look it up. Yeah, but it was the princes that persuaded Hanan. And so they they were egging him on, and he 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 ran with it. Yeah, because he 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 was lacking a backbone. Uh, I did want to mention one thing here, which I, I just found out, man. This is, wow, I can't believe it. So when you read about, you know, the guys that were embarrassed, they, they had to shave off, they had to wait till their beard grew back, and then David said, okay, wait till your beard comes back, and then come back, and, yeah. you know, we'll, we'll figure out what, what the next course of action will be. Well, in this passage that you read, um, you said something about and the people stank before David or something like that. Yeah. Okay, that has nothing to do with those guys that were embarrassed. That was, let me look it up again. Which verse was that? Six, verse six. Yeah, so let me read that. But I always assumed that it talked about the, so watch this. And when the children of Ammon saw that they, who's they? Them, that, the children of Ammon, yeah. stank in the sight of David. In other words, David now looked at them with, with disdain. With disdain, yes. But all this time, you know why I always thought the word stink or stank? Because right before this mess, this verse is these guys that are half naked with half a beard, and David says, Yeah, go sit in that corner and wait till your beards grow back. So in my mind, I was always I was always thinking that that verse in verse number six was referring to those those guys. But it's not. It's referring to the children of Ammon. You see that? Yeah. Um, let me see. Second Samuel ten. Second Samuel ten, verse six. Let me just look at the Hebrew real quick, just to make sure. The word "stank" or "they stank" is uh, Strong's eight eight seven, H eight eight seven. It means primitive root. To abhor, to stink, to have a bad smell, to become odious, to make, uh, uh, 
Mm. It's used. It's used. Uh, it's actually in the Bible, in the King James Bible. It's eighteen times mentioned. Eighteen times mentioned in the Bible, and ten of those times it's translated as stink. Three times it's translated as abhor. One time as abomination. One time it's loathsome. One time as stinking savor. One time is utterly. For emphasis. So, but the 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 context will tell you this had nothing to do with those guys that were embarrassed. This was the children of Ammon. So, I just I just figured that out right now. All these years, I was reading this. I was reading it wrong. So it was the children. Of, so they they figured out. Hey, David doesn't like us anymore, and that's basically what what started all of this to happen. All right, let's go chapter eleven, guys. Uh, the moment of truth is here. Wow. Chapter 11. One second. Really uh, was not looking forward to this, but I mean, we know what's going to happen, but still, it's like, man, it breaks, it breaks my heart, you know, because he really did have a good thing going on. Hold on. Chapter. Oh, where are we? There it is. Chapter 11. The fall of King David. Oh man, what just happened? All right, uh, chapter 11. The city of Rabbah besieged. David committeth adultery. Uriah is slain. Oh, David, yeah. I don't think it was the fall of King David, but I think it was the stain of King the David. The stain, right, right, the stain, yeah. You're right. It's not the fall, but like, like spiritually speaking, I mean, he this was this was bad. It was just bad. Everything was bad. What do you, what did you keep read what you just read? Did we get in the uh... the city the city Rabba Rabba is besieged David committeth adultery Uriah is slain oh. Yeah How does one commit adultery when they has two or three wives Adultery is when you when you have relations when where he has five wives like this, no eight. He has eight wives, I believe. The, the last count we had. Okay. Uh, but adultery is having uh, relations outside of marriage. You're you're in a marriage relationship. Outside of his eight wives. Correct. Yeah. Exactly. Wow. Nice. Yeah. Just they, because I, he had. So just because Mark, he had eight. Yeah. Yeah. Mark. Mark. Your Mark. Your question is okay. What's the difference, right? Yeah, what's the what's the forget about it, yeah, Mark? Well, back, you, that's a good point. Yeah, back 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 then, there were many, 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 many people with many, many wives. Right. So, what's the difference? It was it was it was the thing back then. Right. Yeah, and uh, but 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 uh, Kimberly brought up a good point. Yeah, Bathsheba yeah. was married uh, right there. So Mark, Uriah. there's another. Oh, to yeah. somebody else. Hello. Else, yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. I I I should take I take a point though. <laughs> good good uh, good job, Kimberly. No, you can All right, the, Mark, you can keep the point. It's fine. Okay. I'm just gonna go get more. I'm gonna go get seven more wives. That's all. Uh, the word became flesh asked, why did God allow so many marriages? Well, matter of fact, it wasn't that way. Uh, it was one on one. You know, that's how God designed it. But because of the the lust and the hardness of the hearts of man, uh, th these things started to happen. And, um, you know, it got to the point where when a man didn't want to be with a woman, he would literally just give her a letter and say i don't want you anymore see ya i mean that's how it was really? it was just yeah jesus mentioned that in uh, matthew chapter 19. Walking jesus said he's yeah yeah so i mean it was that that's not how god designed things it was man, man who you know just his insatiable appetite for more and more and more, you know, always. And you see that in the in the in the journey in the wilderness, they always always complained about something. Oh, how come we don't have this? We don't have that. And we remember how it used to be, and you know, just always ungrateful. That's that's pretty much what caused David to 
to get to this point. So we're going to read it here, guys. Let's, uh, let's, we'll be the fourth wall here on the, uh, on this episode. Wow. Okay. Let's begin. How many verses, Mark? 27. All right. Thank you. Let's go. <clears throat> Verse one. And when the year was expired in the time when kings go forth to battle, David sent Joab and his servants with him and all Israel who destroyed the children of Ammon and besieged Rabbah. But David remained in Jerusalem. I wonder why he wasn't with the rest, the rest of the, uh, the crew. But he stayed. He stayed back. Okay. Verse 2. And when it was evening tide, David arose out of his bed. Arose out of his bed and walked upon and walked upon the roof of the king's palace. And from the roof he saw a woman washing herself. And the woman was very beautiful to look upon. And David sent and inquired what woman it was. And one said, is not this Bathsheba, the daughter of Eliam, wife to Uriah the Hittite? Then David sent messengers and took her away. And she came unto him, and he lay with her. Now she was purified from her uncleanness. And she returned unto her house. That now she was purified from her, from her uncleanness, meaning she was... Uh, I guess very um, fertile, maybe at this point. She was clean, I guess, you know, that time of purification that women have, anyhow. So it's parentheses. Now she was purified from her uncleanness, close parentheses, and she returned unto her house. Wow. So she goes back home, and the woman conceived. Look how fast this thing is just happening, right? One sentence to the next is like, what? Nine months later, really? And she conceived, and the, and the woman conceived. Therefore, she sent and told David and said, I am with child. Then David sent to Joab saying, send me Uriah the Hittite. And Joab sent Uriah to David. Now, obviously, she wasn't, she was not, uh, full term she just realized that she was pregnant uh, maybe a few weeks after maybe a month after but she she knew that she was pregnant she goes to david and then david immediately sends for her husband uriah the hittite which is one of his soldiers and joab sent uriah to david and when uriah came unto him david demanded him how joab did and how the people feared and how the war prospered. Let me get an alternate reading on that. I don't know if I like this the uh, way it's read. It is spelled out here. Let me see if Mark has a better reading on verse 7. Uh, one second. Mark, what do you got in verse 7? When Uriah came to him, David asked how Joab was doing and how the people were doing and how the war was going. So he's just chit-chat. Chit-chat. Correct. Correct. Okay. All right. Thank you, Mark. It just sounded weird the way it was spelled out. Okay. Verse eight. Afterward, David sent, said to Uriah, go down to thine house and wash thy feet. So Uriah departed out of the king's palace and the king sent a present after him. But Uriah slept at the door of the king's palace with all the servants of his Lord and went not down to his house. Don't miss that. Okay. Uriah he David told him basically, hey, Uriah, you know what? You, you've done a good job. Why don't you take some time off? Go home. Spend time with your wife. Wash your feet. You know, wash your feet. Relax. That's just a way of him saying relax and take it easy. Now, obviously, why did David do this? Because he's crossing his fingers hoping that Uriah would go and have relations with his wife and, you know, try to cover up this, this pregnancy, Make, making Uriah think that he's the dad. So he does, but Uriah, he doesn't go down to be with his wife. Why? Because he's a man of honor 
and he knows that they're in war right now. It's wartime, and you know there's there's a lot that needs that is going on. He's like, I, this is not a time for me to be with my wife. This is a time for me to to fight for my king, David. Talk about a loyal subject, right? That's what kind of man Uriah was, just so you know. Verse 9, But Uriah slept at the door of the king's palace with all the servants of his lord and went not down to his house. Then they told David, saying, Uriah went not down to his house. And David And David said unto Uriah, Comest thou not from thy journey? Why Why didst thou not go down to thine house? Then Uriah answered David, The ark of Israel and Judah dwell in tents, and my lord Joab and the servants of my lord abide in the open fields. Shall I then go into mine house to eat and drink and lie with my wife? By thy life, he's telling to King David, by thy life and by the life of thy soul, I will not do this thing. Wow. Amazing. Then said, then said, uh, then David said unto Uriah, Tarry yet this day, and tomorrow I will send thee away. So Uriah abode in Jerusalem that day and the morrow. Verse 13. Then David called him, and he did eat and drink before him, and he made him drunk. And that evening he went out to lie on his couch with the servants of his Lord, but went not down to his house. So even, oh, let me make sure that I read that right. Mark, uh, can you give us uh, verse 13, please, in the ESV? So it says, And David invited him, and he ate in his presence and drank, so that he made him drunk. And in the evening he went out to lie on his couch with the servants of his Lord, comma, but he did not go down to his house. So even drunk, he, he refused to go down and, and, and spend time with his wife. Because he, he says, hey, I'm on duty. I need, to, I, need to be, I need to serve my king. Wow. Okay, thank you, Mark. Verse 14. Verse 14. Um, and on the morrow, David wrote a letter to Joab and sent it by the hand of Uriah. Did you catch that? Look at the irony of it. So the letter that Joab is going to get was actually delivered by Uriah, the Hittite. And Joab, he's he's the commander, he's the military commander for David. And basically the letter is going to say, "Hey, make sure Uriah dies." And Uriah is the one delivering that letter or that message from King David to Joab. Talk about irony, right? Crazy. All right. um, Verse. uh, And on the morrow, David wrote a letter to Joab and sent it by the hand of Uriah. And he wrote thus in the letter, Put ye Uriah in the forefront of the strength of the battle and... Uh, I don't know what that word says. It's rubbed out. Hold on. Verse 15. Hold on one second. Mark, uh, what do you have there in verse 15? And recoil, recoil ye back from him. Recoil, is that what that says? No, in the letter he wrote, set Uriah in in the forefront of the, of the hardest fighting and then draw back from him that he may be struck down and die. Yeah, I think that word is re- recoil. I just the R is rubbed out, but it's uh, something something E C U L E. So uh, now it makes sense. And he wrote thus in the letter: Put ye Uriah in the forefront of the strength of the battle, and recoil ye back from him, that he may be smitten and die. So basically, it was a suicide mission. He says, "Hey, we're going to put Uriah at the very front." And uh, you talk about Benghazi all over again. This was it right here. You know, they it was a setup that he would die. He would look like a hero, and it would look accidental. But it was all it was all a setup. 
uh, verse 16. Thank you, Mark. Verse 16. So when Joab besieged the city, he assigned Uriah unto a place where he knew that strong men were. And the men of that city came out and fought with Joab, and there fell of the people of the servants of David and Uriah, the, and there fell the people of for the, fell the people of the servants of David, and Uriah the Hittite also died. I wonder how many died there. It didn't say. It says, And the men of the city came out and fought with Joab, and there fell of the people of the servants of David, and Uriah the Hittite also died. Verse 18, Then Joab sent and told David all the things concerning the war, and he changed and he charged the messenger, saying, When thou hast made an end of telling the matters of the war unto the king, and if the king's anger arise, so that he say unto thee, Wherefore approach ye unto the city to fight? Knew ye not that they would hurl from the wall? Uh I think that was like maybe the throwing arrows, perhaps. Verse 21. Who smote, Abim who smote Abimelech, son of Jerubasheth? Did not a woman cast a piece of a millstone upon him from the wall, and he died in the Thebes? Why went ye nigh the wall? Then say thou, thy servant Uriah the Hittite is also dead. So the messengers went and came and showed David all that Joab had sent him for. Okay, wait a minute. Just a little strange, the the exchange here. Uh, Mark, from 19 to 21, can you give us an ESV reading, please, from 19 to 21? And he instructed the messenger, when you have finished telling all the news about the fighting to the king, then if the king's anger rises, and if he says to you, why did you go so so near the city to fight? Why did you go so near the city to fight? Did you not know that they would shoot from the wall? Who killed Abimelech, the son of Jerusabeth? Whoops, Jerusabeth, Sheth. Do not do not a woman cast an upper millstone on him from the wall, so that he died at Thesbes, at the Bez. Why did you go so near the wall? Then you shall say, your servant Uriah the Hittite is dead also. Wow. This is all orchestrated. Every, everything. The, the, the conspiracy. Talk, talk about conspiracy, right? The cover up, everything. Yep. Let me see something, guys, real quick. I'm sorry. I just want to double check. This is uh, 2 Samuel chapter number 11. One second, please. Second Samuel chapter number 11. Mm -hmm. One moment. One moment. All right. Uh, I'm going to, I'm just going to read here from, uh, from another version. Just, just, a, I, I want to get a little, a little, different uh, picture here one second verse 18 uh verse 18 listen to what this says joab sent david joab sent david a full account of the battle he instructed the messenger so D joab is sent sending david a message now he instructed the messenger when ye have finished giving the king this account of the battle the king's anger may flare up and he may ask you, why did you get so close to the city to fight? Didn't you know that they would shoot arrows from the wall? Who killed Abimelech, son of Jerubasheth? Didn't a woman drop an upper millstone on him from the wall so that he died in Theb Theb Thebes? Why did you get so close to the wall? If he asked you this, then say to him, moreover, your servant Uriah the Hittite is dead. So, so Joab is sending someone to go tell King David everything that happened. 
And, and he's telling the servant, hey, if the king starts ask, asking you a bunch of questions, first say this, and then make sure you close it with Uriah the Hittite is dead. The messenger set out, verse 22, and when he arrived, he told David everything Joab had sent him to say. The messenger said to David, the men overpowered us and came out against us in the open, but we drove them back to the entrance of the city gate. Then the archer shot arrows at your servants from the wall, and some of the king's men died. Moreover, your servant Uriah the Hittite is dead. So that's the message. And then we we read the rest of the story there. I just wanted to kind of get that because you, you have, sometimes you have a hard time trying to figure out who's talking, who said what, and who's quoting who. It's just... A bit confusing sometimes, but on a careful reading, you know, you, you'll pick it up. Uh, so let me fast forward. So the messenger, messenger went down, verse 22, and showed David all that Joab had sent him. And the messenger said unto David, Certainly the men prevailed against us and came out unto us into the field, but we pursued them into the entering of the gate. But the shooter shot from the wall against thy servants, and some of the king's servants be dead, and thy servant Uriah the Hittite is also dead. Verse 25. Then David said unto the messenger, Thus shalt thou say unto Joab. So now he's, David's now saying, Okay, thank you for the message. Go back now to Joab. And this is the message. Let not this thing trouble thee, trouble thee. For the sword, for the sword, mm, devours. There it is. For the sword devoureth one as well as another. Make thy battle more strong against the city and destroy it and encourage thou him. And when the wife of Uriah heard that her husband Uriah was dead, she mourned for her husband. I, I feel that the exchange with David and Joab and this mystery messenger, I feel that that was all a show uh, to make it look like they were both surprised, like David, Joab, Joab wanted the messenger to tell David what happened. David wanted the messenger to tell Joab, okay, I got the message, you know, let's go after him hard now. I, I don't know, I just feel, just reading it with you guys now, that it was just done for show, just to have like a little bit of an alibi type thing. Uh, and if you guys reread that, maybe you'll pick that up again. But it's it's very mysterious. This whole thing about Joab and David. And they already knew. Joab knew what the letter said. The letter said, "Hey, make sure Uriah dies." That's the letter that David sent to Joab by by the hand of Uriah. So there was no confusion as to what was to be done. But I just feel like we just read a couple of verses now that were really just for show. I, I don't know. That's the, the feeling I'm getting out of it. And then the next thing we read here, verse 26, And when the wife of Uriah heard that her husband Uriah was dead, she mourned for her husband. I'm sure she really felt bad too, now being pregnant with another man's child. And on top of that, she'll never see her husband again. Verse 27, so when the morning was passed, David sent and took her into his house, and she became his wife and bare him a son. But the thing that David had done displeased the Lord. And that's where we end. And it's a very sad story. Um, tomorrow, we'll see, we'll see what happens to that child. But uh, I... Uh, Peter, Mark, sorry to uh, kind of end on a sour note, but hey, it is what it is. Yeah, here's here's, here's a question, uh, Bathsheba. Bathsheba, how could she marry somebody that just killed her husband? She doesn't know that. Nobody knows that. Uh, the only people that know that are Joab and she David. She doesn't know. That's right. Oh, and us, the audience. Yeah, she doesn't know. No, she's not sitting in that chair in Valley Village. I don't know if she'll ever find out, right? I don't think she ever found out, man. Yeah, I mean, well, the word became... Know, right? 
the word became flesh brought brought up a great question how did david sleep at night i don't know man i don't know because you know what he killed he not he not only he not only took a man's wife got her pregnant but he orchestrated the execution of one of his faithful ser servants right yeah a, a guy that would he would die for his king he would die for him more than the trifecta I, hello so like i said you know it's it's a it's a stain uh, peter you're right it's a stain on david and even jesus will um you know it'll be mentioned it the bible will mention this this uh this episode many times uh but anyhow Let's pray, guys. Tomorrow we'll uh, we'll continue. We'll see what happens. But all I will say this is: we remember the story of Goliath. When you hear the name David, you know that. Whenever someone says David, you think of Goliath. You just—it's automatic. But another thing you think of is this Bathsheba, and that is a sad thing. All right, guys. Well, let's uh, let's pray. Thank you, everyone, for being on tonight. And uh, I know it was a little longer read, but we did we did cover what chapter seven, eight, nine, ten, and eleven. Whoa, five chapters tonight, guys. Okay, so, so Omar Omar Beth, Bathsheba was taking a bath in the evening. <laughs> Good night, Peter. Pray pray for us, Peter. Pray for us. Mark, uh, can you take a point off of uh, off of this guy real quick? It's it was already done. It was done before. All right, th thank you. All right, Peter, take us home, brother. Taking off. I'm just waiting for um, Rain's fingers to go faster. Oh, there we go. All done. Thank you, Rain. Thank you, Mr. Rain. Once again, for your beautiful prayers. O champion, leader, and Lord, vanquisher of Hades, we, thy creatures and servants, offer thee prayers of peace, for thou hast delivered us from eternal death. But as thou hast unutterable loving, un unutterable loving kindness, Free us from every fleshly danger as we cry, Jesus, Son of God, have mercy on us. Creator of all, as of old, thou didst open ear and tongue to the deaf and dumb. Likewise, open now our perplexed minds and tongues to the praise of thy most holy name that we may cry to thee with love in our hearts. Jesus, all merciful Savior, have mercy on us. Seeking to, seeking to understand the incomprehensible, Philip asked, Lord, show us the Father. And thou didst answer him, have I been so long with you, and yet hast thou not known that I am in the Father and the Father in me? Likewise, O oh incom incompre incomprehensible one, with fear we cry to thee, Jesus, everlasting sinner's salvation. O oh Lord, we praise and love thee unto the ages of ages. One God, amen, amen, amen. Heavenly Father, again, once again, thank you so much for this beautiful, amazing, wonderful fellowship. We we're able to come before your mighty throne and partake of the reading of your precious word. Father, we thank you for our brother Omar. We pray for his family. We thank you for our brother Mark. Thank you for its faithfulness. We thank you for, for Dots, for Mia, for Anita, 
and the Subin family. We thank you for all of our friends that gathered together in fellowship for the reading of your word, to be strengthened and to share in the joy and love of the salvation that, that you have for us. I pray for those that are able to find our channel, listen to the recording, that their hearts also will be turned towards you and have a greater longing for, for your love and for the knowledge of your word and to grow in faith. We look forward to the reading tomorrow. We love you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Mr. I'm Spores? Waiting. I'm waiting I'm waiting for the credits to roll with that music. <laughs> man, I know tonight was yeah, it was a crazy night. But hey, Uriah, man, that's that's one of the guys you want on your team, right? Wow. Yeah. That guy that guy was was beyond beyond faithful. Yeah. Beyond faithful. Mark, uh thanks for the uh the picture, Mark. Cool shave. <laughs> that was close. Look at the guy with the scissors. Oh man, they, that was they, funny. They need they need Nair. That was funny. They need Nair. Well, tomorrow night we'll find out what happens with the No, with the, no, sir. No. Or to, no, today, tonight. today, tonight, tonight. That's right. Tonight. It's 1209. Right, tonight. Awesome, man. I appreciate you guys. Thank you for staying up. Thank you, brother Rain, Judy. God bless you saint word became flesh wow a lot of people on tonight praise the lord and we had peter well, let me see who else kimberly was on i know she stayed up a little later but thank you kimberly we gotta we gotta test how do you test them to make sure they're still awake like ricky picky yeah ricky up ticky's in the house i know greasy was on we had right. also uh they all had to get up early tomorrow ichiro ao ichiro ao ao nice to see you ichiro crypto wow all the superstars were out tonight well thank you guys Teresa, of course we're, we're missing brandon adam garcia brandon i know brandon i sent them the invite we'll make it happen guys hey we're all missing right. we're, uh, this evening we're also missing our friend from scotland uh ringo yeah ringo yeah. Cat. we'll probably see it until we'll see him on the comments or maybe they listen to the recording all right, guys. Well, right, uh, I'll see you guys in the. I'll see you guys tomorrow. <laughs> I'll see you later today. Later today. Yeah. All right. Good Thank morning. Thank you, guys. All right. <laughs> Good night, guys. Good night, guys.